I promised you a video on Growly, and that is coming, but I just sort of needed to contextualize the people who defend Growly, as well as the sorts of arguments that they make, while giving you a few glimpses into the things Growly has done and the conversation going on around him. I will be uploading that video about Growly fairly soon, should be done in the next few weeks. I just want to be able to make sure I get all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed. Well, 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 would you just look at the subject we finally got around to revisiting, gamers? I'm just uh, gonna have to ask for your forgiveness on that one. Dogs don't exactly have the greatest uh, ability to tell time. So, uh, you know, I thought it was two weeks, turned out to be, you know, three and a half months, but uh, we'll just give or take a couple of months there. Well, we're not going to mince words on this one. I know some of you have been actually waiting for almost a third of a year for this video, so we're going to get right into it. So for those of you who have been staying up to date on the Growly situation, you may know that he's going to be spending 158 days in jail, as he has pled no contest to one of the things he was charged with. Crab Rave. Now, I've never met Growly in person, but based off of what I understand about the bloke, couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. But, as I'm not a legal expert, I'm not going to talk so much on his actual conviction. Instead, for this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about his history, things that have happened, and things that may have pointed to the fact that this was probably going to happen again. Which, as we can see now, considering he is officially a recidivist, it has. Now we're going to need to start with a little bit of a refresher course from my last video, so I'm going to roll a clip for you, because this is going to really contextualize what I'm about to get at in this video. The website, Adjective Species, has actually done a little bit of research on this subject, and what they have here may shock you. A direct quote on their page about the age of an individuals within the fandom says this, It's interesting to note with age that the fandom seems to be migrating to a younger audience. As you move the slider from 2008 to 2010, note how the maximum shifts to a younger age group and a greater percentage of overall respondents. This is visible to many who have gone to major conventions over a period of time. The audience seems younger each year. This website has tracked the age demographics between the years of 2009 and 2016. Now what you'll notice is that for the year 2016, the latest year they have documented, the age demographics for individuals below 18 are close to, if not at their peaks, out of all recorded years. Another important thing to note is that Growly was actually attending conventions between all of these years, meaning he had continuous access to minors. Not only that, an increasingly large number of them, as the data has shown. Oh, did I not mention that Growly is a registered sex offender? Because he is. He was convicted after pleading no contest to the count of lewd or levacious acts with a child of 14 or 15 years old. He served the better part of three years in prison and spent three years on parole after. And he will also be on the sex offenders registry for the remainder of his life. Now, what we've already established is that you didn't really need to do very much to riddle out that there were a lot of kids at these conventions, along with a registered sex offender. That's really, you don't need to, don't need to really put on your thinking cap for that one. You don't need to really scooby-doo it all that much. It was pretty fucking apparent. However, there is one very important thing that I did not really delve into last time, which was his fur affinity ban in 2009. I'm going to go ahead and just read you a fun little excerpt from Wikifur, because this was all public information. So why don't I go ahead and read this for you now. Toro was banned from Fur Affinity on the 23rd of September 2009. A conversation log between Tora and the Dragoneer was discovered in Google's cache, revealing that Tora had knowingly engaged in sexually oriented conversations with minors via Fur Affinity notes. Now, for those of you who don't know how Fur Affinity notes work, these are private conversations, much like Twitter direct messages. These were directly between these two individuals. This is not like a public call in Discord where you might be joking with somebody and somebody underage might happen to be there. These were directed to each other for only each other's eyes. Quote, your response was, don't be afraid to tell me. I won't report ya if you're not of age yet. And heh, you should just show me. I won't tell. XD... If it were just the conviction, that's one thing. But we have notes between you and user where he admits he is 16, and he and you are discussing him going down on himself with his yoga even after he notifies you he is a minor. End quote. 
Now one thing I would really like to point out here is that they had stated that this was after the conviction, as you can see in the quote itself. I'll also point out that after my first video on Growly, there were several people arguing that he hadn't reoffended in a very long time, and there was no signs that he would. While I think we've just established, the contrary is actually true, because it was literally written in black and fucking white. Now you might be wondering, why would he be allowed at conventions if there were these notes in 2009, if this was knowable, if he had been banned from fur affinity already for actions similar to what he was previously convicted for? Well, I don't have any declarative answers that are definitive to give you. But one thing I think is very interesting to point out is that it's always a lot easier to forgive somebody when money's involved. Again, I'm not making any declarative statements. I'm just pointing out an observation. It's easier to forgive somebody when they're willing to pay you. But one thing I can say with certainty is that when he is released, if he is permitted to be at conventions again, after all of this, after everything, whatever con chair permits that decision to be made has to be the dumbest motherfucker who ever existed under the sun especially with the recent Milo Yiannopoulos debacle where we've established people can be banned from conventions if they are in fact a threat to people. That's going to set a really dangerous precedent if he's permitted to return ever again. Well, that's just going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it was worth the wait. I know it was a little bit of a shorter one, but unfortunately there just wasn't a whole lot to add to this conversation. Like I said before, as far as him pleading no contest and being convicted of one of the charges and, you know, being sentenced to at least some jail time, as I said, couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Links to the artist who do my character stills will be in the description and the pinned comment, as well as the artist who does the logo for my thumbnails. There will also be links to my own social media, such as my DeviantArt, my BitChute, my Twitter, and my Discord server. Feel free to look at any of those if you'd like to as well, and you have yourself a great day.